Okay, so we're going to talk about plagiarism. And I call this workshop Get Real About Plagiarism because uh, there is a lot of emphasis in your English 111 and English 112 classes on how to do citations and where to put the comma and what goes in italics and what goes in quotation marks. And all of that information is very important. But none of it is, is, is as important as making sure that we give credit to the people who need credit and we do that properly. Um, and, and what's most important is that we avoid plagiarism. So this is about what plagiarism is, how to identify it, and how to avoid it. So let's start with what is plagiarism. Quite simply, plagiarism is using someone's words, ideas, or sentence structure without giving proper credit. So keep in mind that it's not just words. A lot of people understand that if they lift a sentence or two sentences or a paragraph from something someone else wrote and they paste it into their paper, they understand that they can't just do that, that they have to show that these are someone else's words, that they have to give credit to that person. Um, and we'll talk a little bit about how we have to do that and what the proper way to do that is. But it's also ideas, meaning if you read something and you start to understand it and learn it and know it as your own, you still have to cite who you learned it from. Um, and sentence structure, which means if you were ever taught to take the original passage and replace a word here and there with a synonym, uh, that's actually still plagiarism because you've just taken the way someone else wrote it and it's still going to be in their style and their sentence structure and just popped in synonyms. And that's not a true paraphrase and it in fact does qualify as plagiarism as you can see from the definition here. Okay, there are two kinds of plagiarism, deliberate and accidental. Uh, deliberate is when you know what you're doing. You go out, you know that you're not supposed to take other people's words, but it's just easier, so you cut and paste it into your paper, or you buy a paper. And you're intentionally trying to put, so, take someone else's work and pass it off as your own. And you know it's wrong. Accidental plagiarism is when you don't really know what you're doing, you don't really understand it, um, but you're still passing off someone's words, ideas, or sentence structure as your own. Now, on a personal level, to your instructor, it might matter whether you've done this deliberately or accidentally. But when it comes down to it, we can't give any points to a paper that's plagiarism, that is guilty of plagiarism, um, and neither form is acceptable, whether it was uh, deliberate or accidental. That's why it's so important that we understand uh, what it is and that we never resort to, well, I didn't know any better because it's our job to know better and to make sure that we don't do it. Okay, let's talk about what it is. And I have quite a few examples here. Uh, this isn't to scare you and to say all these things are plagiarism, but I think that we oversimplify it and we're not doing anyone any favors by oversimplifying what plagiarism is. So I've broken it down to its smallest components so that we can really understand what constitutes plagiarism and all the different ways that one might plagiarize. So these are the things we're going to make sure we don't do. Plagiarism, what is it? It's taking papers that were written by a friend, a family member, or purchased off the internet and submitting them as your own. I think everyone knows this is wrong. If your neighbor wrote a paper and never finished that class and says, hey, look, I wrote that paper. It's on that topic you need to write about, but I never finished the class and I never turned it in. And you put your name on it and turn it in, that's plagiarism. Your teacher's going to know it's not your work because they know your voice. And even if they didn't know, it's still plagiarism. That paper is going to earn you no points because you didn't do the work. And I think most people know to avoid that. It also is when you fail to use in-text citations. Um, we have to use in-text citations in addition to having a citation page in order to show readers where our information came from. Think of it as a two-part system. The citation page is there to give us all the publication information, so if I wanted to find the sources myself, I could. The in-text citation is like a parenthetical note, it's information in parentheses, which is there to guide us to that citation page where we can then find more information about the source if we want to. We have to use those in-text citation in every instance we use information from the source, whether we've put it in our own words or shown that it's a direct quote. It doesn't matter. We have to use it in every instance. Um, a lot of students who've never done this before feel like they're citing too much. I've never seen a paper with too many citations. What happens 
is you're just not used to it, so it looks funny. But the more you do it, the more you'll realize it's a good thing. It's a sign of your credibility that you're citing your sources, and it's the way you avoid plagiarism. Okay, if you lift paragraphs or sentences from the internet or from any other source and insert them into your paper. So maybe you didn't take a whole paper that someone else wrote, but you just took a sentence here or a paragraph there and put it in your paper directly. That's plagiarism because by putting it straight into your paper, you're saying, these are not only my ideas, they are my words. I wrote this. You can't do that. You have to write it yourself and you have to cite the source. If you use ideas found somewhere else or information that you learned somewhere else and inserted into your paper without giving credit to the source, that's plagiarism. Now again, I want to emphasize it's a two-part system. You give credit to the source not only by listing that source on your citation page, but by having an in-text citation that points us to that citation page. Otherwise, your reader can't tell what information is from you and what information is from the source.